Say the Lord is main. We're rejoicing. Amen. We're glad to be here. Oh, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, just looking forward to uh, oh, a glorious day in the Lord. wonder what he has planned for us today. Uh, I'm going to ask Papa to come and open the service in prayer. My soul, my soul, my soul. Jesus, 
to look upon the heads of the countries everywhere, Lord, in the name of Jesus, kings and queens, Lord, presidents, Lord, in the name of Jesus, look upon their heart, their mind, and their soul, Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them to know, Lord God, that you are in charge, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord, look upon our president, Trump, Lord, look upon his mind, body, heart, and soul, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord, we ask you, Lord Jesus, look upon each and every sanctuary throughout the nation, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord, look upon your apostles, Lord Jesus, your prophets, Lord Jesus, missionaries and pastors, Lord, throughout the nation, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord Jesus, take charge, Lord Jesus, and have your way, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to anoint the speak and the teacher today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, anoint the praise team and the choir, Lord, in the name of Jesus, anoint the musicians, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord, we ask you, Lord Jesus, take charge of the service today, Lord, and have your way, Lord, and when your will be done, Lord. In the name of Jesus, look upon the sick and the shedding everywhere, Lord. Look upon the backsliders everywhere, Lord. In the name of Jesus, wine, biblical, alcoholics, drug addicts, Lord Jesus, prostitutes and pimps, Lord. Homosexuals, male and females, Lord. Look upon their hearts, their souls, and their minds, Lord. Give them to know, Lord, that you're God, and the signs of heaven go out, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, look upon the young and the old behind prison bars, Lord, given our halls, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of hosts, Lord, look upon their mind, hearts, and soul, Lord, give them to know, Lord God of hosts, Lord, you still live, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my God of hosts, Lord. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to anoint, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Send down your latter rain, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Rain down your Holy Ghost, Lord, upon your peoples everywhere, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my God of hosts, Lord. We ask you, Lord, take charge of the service today, Lord, and have your way and let your will be done, Lord. Not mine, not theirs, Lord, but your will be done. According to your will, your way, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. These blessings and others we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right.
will be. Glorious day that will be with my Jesus I get to see. Hallelujah. Praise to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Isn't he wonderful? He never takes a break. He's always there. He walks with me and he talks with me. We just need to listen. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Savior. Thank you, my Savior. Thank you, my Savior. Thank you, my Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, my Jesus. Can't stop thanking you, Lord. Can't stop thanking you, Jesus. Just can't stop. Stop thanking you, Jesus. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for all your love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Draw me close to
the Lord died and paid the price for us. And he rose again. Hallelujah. But we celebrate his death and his in this. And we do it was instituted. The Lord's Supper was instituted by Jesus. And we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 through 26. For I received that, amen. The word of God says that love covers a multitude of transgressions or sins. And in John 3 16, say it with me, for God so loved the world that he gave the only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that through the Son the world might be saved, because the world was condemned already. The last verse is my paraphrase. Mm -hmm. We were born into sin, but Yeshua redeemed us back to the Father by paying the price that only He could pay. He was the Lamb slain for the foundation of the world, and because what He did on Calvary. Now, we say the hamotzi usually, which is the, the blessing over the bread, the traditional blessing, and we believe this is what Yeshua would have said on that night. And it's amazing, it's the, the words of the hamotzi, Baruch Ta'aronai Elheinim Lecha'olam, hamotzi lechen min haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord of God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the earth. Who is the bread of life? Jesus. So the whole time, they had a little riddle in their prayer. They had the answer to everything right there in their prayer over their food. When they gave thanks for the bread, for the food that came out of the earth, they were actually also prophesying. You know how things spiritual come in layers, right? You know? They were also prophesying the resurrection of their Messiah and our Messiah, Yeshua, in the very Hamotzi. And it's just during that prayer, I believe their eyes were opened. Those twelve apostles. He said, ah, because he said he was going to go to the cross and he was going to die for them. But he is the resurrection and he is the life. Amen. Let's partake of the bread of life together. The traditional Hebrew blessing of the wine is Baruch Atah Adonai Elohim Malach HaOlam Barim Pervei Chavachin. Blessed you say with me, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Who are the fruit of the vine? We are. How were we created? Through the blood of Jesus, and that's why we use juice, grape juice, the fruit of the vine. Amen. Yeah? So let's go ahead and partake of the juice together. Amen. And the scripture says, after Jesus and the apostles sang a, took the Last Supper together, they sing a hymn. I wish I knew which hymn it was, but let's sing a hymn. Can I do a biting in the
hundreds of, you know, a week ago. And uh, so it's been, and then uh, Don, a friend of our family, friend, passed away um, from Morocco, Don passed. Um, Pastor? Yes. Paul was in an accident also. Paul Schlenfo. where yes. is he now? He's walk, he wasn't even walk, able to walk when it first happened. He's back on his feet now. When was so, an accident? I think two weeks ago. Oh, Lord, we pray for Paul Schlenfo. Um I think uh, we need to pray for Larry, uh, for Larry and Rob and his student. Pray for your pastors always. Pray for our pastors, all of the pastors. Where our families are under attack, you know. Um, oh, I know you, your husband, when he needs prayer, yes, yes. Your papa, your papa needs your papa chat. He needs prayer. Grandma, yes. Oh, yeah. Grandma. Pray for all the people in Florida. I have a lot of family down there. Yeah, one of our, our bishops, oh, okay. um, Jerry Bernard, they're there, there in Florida, and they. Uh, um, and uh, they requested prayers for the safety department. Hurricane attorneys. Yes, the hurricane attorneys. Uh, for uh, Sister Mary Watts, she, she's been having continuing um, problems, you know, things going on. Pastor Johnny, he was in the hospital with many ulcers. Thank God they found them. Praise the Lord. And you're on the men. Um, uh, Mary Lou is overwhelmed with, with of course, uh, my daughter Ariana, pray for her. You know, this is a lot for a young girl to go through. You know, just uh, Darlene Brown, they lost Sheila Bob, went home to be with the Lord. Her daughter went home to be with the Lord, and her son in law went to be with the Lord all within a week's time. Boom, boom, boom. You know, and that was a couple months ago, but she's still, I haven't spoken to her. Continue to pray for Margaret. You know, uh, pray. Um, Pray, you know, sometimes people, they say they don't want calls or visits, and, you know, I try to respect that, but pray for the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom what to do when somebody says that, because I know one lady had asked specifically for no calls or visits and told me it was really important that we honor her request or she was going to be really angry at me. And four months later, I'm in the Ross department store buying a shirt, and the same lady called and railed on me for not coming to see her and not <laughs> you know, People forget, you know, in, in that time of loss, they're they forgiving. Uh, my friend JD, he just lost his father. Another friend of mine just um, lost, yeah. I mean, it just comes in waves and waves, you know. And, um, but guess what? We serve a risen savior. We serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. That's how it's But, Yeshua, Jesus, he told us that if he went away, he would send a helper. He would teach us all things, amen? He will comfort us, he'll give us um, power. Uh, not like magical power like witches have, or uh, they think they have. Um, but power, real power from the authority of God, from the throne of God. We have power to overcome sin in our lives, power to overcome the attacks of the enemy, power to stand when those around us are from power to keep going when we feel like quitting power. Amen. He has given us power. And so uh, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Larry if he will lead us in the prayer of authority. As the Holy Spirit directs him. Father, by the power of mind, my precious Holy Spirit, we come before you. And Lord, you said in your words, two or more agree upon touching anything, yes, it shall be done. Yes, yes. And Father, we have agreement here, Father. And Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, we pull down these strongholds. And Lord, we just ask yes, your work of the precious Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, yes, your Lord. wonderful work here, Father. And Lord, we just ask Lord, it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I appreciate you, Pastor Glenn Robert. You appreciate the word. Robert, we just love the worship she's gone. Uh, we, I love the way we flow in worship. We just go strong. I appreciate that. Do you appreciate that? Do some moments I know they appreciate that too. Um, where is Reverend Eva? She's going to give an invitation for the offering to me. 
So then come on and give us a special invite. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Lots of hands. Hallelujah. Um, the calendar is in the bulletin. Did everybody get a bulletin? Let me just backtrack just slightly here. Um, the calendar is in it. Okay, that's the month calendar. On the 14th is supposed to be our breakfast. That has been canceled. I just did that calendar this morning <laughs> to tell you how quick things can change. So cross out the 14th breakfast, okay? Other than that, it should be. And all your prayer requests are on the back. Don't forget, all right? Okay, offering. Um, Kevin, do you have the video? Wonderful. If you'll please present that. Hey, I got 10 dimes in my pocket. I got a dollar. Ten dimes. God says, take your ten, take one, give it to me. God says, you can keep the other nine. Can y'all see that? Y'all can't see it. All right. Maybe this will help you. I got 10 raisins. God says, when you, get your, when you earn your 10 raisins, give me one. I'm going to let you keep the other nine. Y'all still ain't got it. I got 10 peanuts in this little thing right here. God say, when you first get the 10 peanuts, don't get greedy and start cracking them open and spending them all. Before you spend or do anything with any of these peanuts, take one out for me. Some of y'all are messing up because you give, listen. Some of y'all are messing up because you're giving God what's due to him on the back end of your bills. The scripture says, honor the Lord with the first fruits of all your increase. Before you pay anybody else, pay God first. You can keep the other nine. I got 10 grapes right here. Give God one. Enjoy the other nine. 10 strawberries. Give God one. Suck on the other nine. <laughs> Give God his and live off the rest. Y'all still ain't got it. I got 10 grapefruits. God said, give him one out of 10. Keep the other nine. 10 apples, I'm just trying to show y'all what it goes like. Give God one. Keep the other nine. 10 oranges. Give God one. It's like clockwork, ain't no ma magic to it. Keep the other nine. Ten pears. Give God one. When you do it right, see, see, let me tell you what happens. See, some of y'all don't give God the 10. You, you keep it. And what happens is all the egg gets sucked out of your bag. So it's just kind of flat. But when you, 
open up your heart to give God one. You get some air. You get you get something in there to. Now look at that. Look at that. God says, give me one out of every ten. You keep the other, the, you keep the other nine, but just honor me this way. Show me you believe that you have faith, that you believe in my kingdom. You want to advance my kingdom. Thank <laughs> you. 
make good neighbors. In biblical times, territorial borders were marked off with boundary stones. Typically, a boundary stone or landmark might be one stone set up on end and indicating the border between a man's field and his neighbors. I wonder how many farmers these days would honor that because, uh, okay. You shall not move your neighbor's boundary mark, which the ancestors have set in your inheritance, which you will inherit in the land that the Lord your God gives to you, you to possess. Deuteronomy 19, 14. So you know what? When there's a boundary set, not only in land, but in different parts of our issues in our life, we set boundaries. And we shouldn't be going around moving other people's boundaries. Or we should right. honor them. Right. During the settlement of American territories, a similar method was used. Settlers would set up rocks and dry the stake into the indicated parcels of land that they were claiming. Hence, the idiom, <clears throat> staking a claim. Yeah. But after that, they had to end up putting up fences because people were not honoring them. That's why fences became necessary. Often it happened that in their absence, unscrupulous neighbors or other settlers would remove these landmarks to their own advantage. Boundary markers worked the same way in the biblical era. An unscrupulous neighbor might move a boundary stone and steal 100 feet of your field. According to the prophet Hosea, Hosea, God pours out his wrath like water on those who move boundary stones. Hosea 5 and 10. The Torah places a special curse on someone who moved a boundary stone, saying, Cursed is he who moves his neighbor's boundary mark. Deuteronomy 27, 17. The Proverbs warn against moving boundaries and especially against encroaching on boundaries of widows and orphans. Do not move the ancient boundary which your fathers have set. Do not move the ancient boundary or go into the fields of the fatherless, for their redeemer is strong and he will plead their case against you. But he will establish the boundary of the widow. Proverbs 22, 28, 23, 10 through 11, and 15, 25. The prohibition against moving a boundary stone can be applied to many situations in life. It reminds us that God deems it healthy and appropriate to maintain proper boundaries and distinctions. For example, example the boundaries that maintain a distinction between genders are important. Amen. A person should always be careful to protect the boundaries between private life and public life, between family and friends, between parent and child, between husband and wife, and so on. When boundary lines become fuzzy, confusion and conflicts ensue. And we know who's not the author of confusion. Jesus is not the author Amen. of confusion. No, he's not. The godly person is careful to maintain a sense of where another person's property and privacy ends and begins. There are four types of people. The one who says, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is yours. This is the normal type person. But some say this is the type of person who lived in Sodom. The one who says, what's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. Mm -hmm. This type of person is an ignoramus. The one who says, what's mine is yours, and what's yours is yours, this is a righteous person. The one who says, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine, this is a wicked person. Mm -hmm. from a so praise God, we want to learn to respect boundaries in this place. And there's, there's types of boundaries 
in our lives that only we know that are set. And there are types of boundaries that everybody should know that you have set in your life. Because you are the only epistle some people will ever see. You're supposed to be light and salt to those who are around us in the world so that we can set an example of our life being a light to the world, just like Jesus is the light. Amen. 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 Pastor, isn't that what they did to Israel? They gave, yeah, they had to, they, they destroyed their boundaries. You mean when they gave away the land and divided his people? That's what God said not to do. Do not divide my land or scatter my people. Right. That's true. <laughs> I had a microphone already. Sister, I'm going to call you sisters. I'm going to come and sing another special for say. So welcome and with joy. Hallelujah. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And today is Communion Sunday, and we're going to sing a special song. It's an old one, but it says, I will cherish the old rugged cross. Hope you will like it, and in Jesus' name, God bless. Read it, no matter how many times we read it, 
and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into it for today's need. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now, we lift you up, and we give you praise, and we give you glory and honor. I thank you, I'm humbled by the opportunity to be before your people and to minister your word. So Father, Lord, let me decrease as you increase in me, let your Holy Spirit take control. Let the things that you would like to say to your people be shared in a way that is easy to understand, that it takes root in our spirit in our hearts, in our minds, in our soul. Father, we ask also that you would guard the seed that's planted in good ground and that the enemy would not be able to steal it away, but that it would flourish and accomplish the task for which you sent it. Father, your word promises it will, so we thank you in advance, knowing that you are not a man, that you should lie, neither is your arm short, that you cannot perform your word and so we just give you the praise and the glory in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Savior, salvation. Amen and amen. 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 Let's look at John chapter 15, 9 through 14. Hallelujah. I'm reading from the, I, I like the tree light version um, and the English standard version are my two favorite preferred um, versions. But I, I read from the... Um, Tree of Life version, a lot of times because they restored a lot of the original names, you know, to the original um, Hebrew or the Greek. And um, I prefer, actually, it's mostly the Hebrew. And I prefer to call people by the name that they were actually called instead of a translated name. But that's just, it's neither here nor there. It's just my preference. Okay, you know? Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in, everybody say in. Yeah. Yeah. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be full in you and your joy may be full. This is my commandment. Is it a suggestion? No. This is my what? Command. This is my what? Command. This is my, yeah, right? Is it a suggestion, Pastor Lord? This is my commandment that you love one another. Now it gets even steeper. It's even harder, more difficult. I don't think we're able to do this, Pastor Johnny, without the Holy Spirit. Because he says, just as I loved you. Now, you know, Yeshua, he loved us so much, he went to the cross and died for you and me and each of us. Are you willing to go to any place of torture and die for me Hallelujah. or for your brother or your sister <coughs> sitting next to you in church or how about for the stranger that's still in their sin All right. not even serving God that's how much Jesus loved us that he came he left glory We'll understand it better by and by, right? As the old song says, we see now through like dark colored glasses, but when we shall see him face to face, we'll understand. When the scripture tells us the eye is not seen, ear is not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for us. Amen? So, Yeshua, he's the king of glory, he's the son of God, sitting at the right home of Abba Father, Yahweh, just right there in the throne room at the right hand with the seven spirits of God around them in the throne room and the crystal sea, the lava which they would be purified in and the elder, 24 elders that think about what Jesus is, what it looks like in heaven. John the Revelator gave us a depiction of what it was. He left all of that glory and he came and he dwelt in Jerusalem. He came to Bethlehem. 
Nazareth, Capernaum, these are these places he frequented. Hallelujah. To a people that were oppressed by a foreign ruler who worshiped false gods that he is the God of the universe. To a mother who was accused of being, you know, not such a nice girl. To a father who probably died young, because we don't hear much more of Joseph after, what, the, this is the very beginning of the Gospels, after the advent of Christ, we know he was a righteous man because even though the law said he was to have her stoned because of her oh, no. perceived infidelity because she was a child and they were just engaged and he had not been with her the way a man and a woman are together when they're married. And so the law said to put her to have her stoned. Yeah. He decided to put her away quietly and send her off to Elizabeth, I believe, right. her cousin, so people wouldn't what? know what was going on because he loved her. So we know that, that and but he dies. Most likely he dies. We don't see or hear of him after the early years. You know he was a carpenter. He probably left him some wealth because the issue he went around with his twelve disciples and he was a master, not just like we call him master our Lord, but he was like a master tradesman. You know, he, he was he didn't have to work, he had money, so. But he was God, he didn't need money anyway. If he didn't, he pulled it. Remember, he pulled a coin out of the fish's mouth. But. He was God, is God, and always shall be God, the Son of God, and our sinful King and Savior, he went to the cross. He left all his glory and came and led this a life here. And he taught us. The word says that if it was written down, all the things he did and all the things that he taught, there would be enough to contain it in the whole world. But he walked among men and women and he loved on everyone. I think about it when, when you think about um, Lazarus when he rose from the grave. Right yeah, before Jesus went to him and, and, and rose, you know, called him forth out of that grave on the fourth day. The sisters said to Yeshua when he got there, "You're too late. The one you loved has died. Right. Yeah. He already stinks. He's in the grave four days." Which was important that three days had passed because in their culture, you weren't legally dead until 72 hours had passed, until three days and three nights. And you were not legally dead until that. So it was important that he spend that three days and night. Remember, the, remember when Jairus came to, to Jesus the same time the woman was crawling through the crowd and, and Jairus came to him because his daughter was sick or died and the, and the servant said, don't bother the master, your daughter's already died. Remember that? And, and then and Jesus stopped when the lady, he felt virtue go out of him, you know, during all that hubbub. And he, he stopped and he said, Hey, Jarius, just hold on. Don't be afraid and only believe. And he went on again. And, and when he went to the, the, the house, to Jarius' house, he said, The girl is not dead, she is sleeping. And he spoke, made her rise, and she got up. So this same Jesus, who walked in the power and authority of God, because he is God, the Son of God, and he's at the right hand of the Father. Now, this same Jesus, he came to earth as a man, and he just was everything he was supposed to be. Perfect. The Messiah. They taught him a strict was He said, You can't keep all of them. That's why I came. If you break one of the commandments, you're guilty of breaking them all. 
So think about that when, when he says not to judge one another too. But I'm really big on that one. That's kind of been my soapbox the last year or so, you know. But it just makes me so grieved, not angry, sad for the people of God who instead of loving one another and spreading the good news that Jesus came and he died on Calvary and he rose again and he's coming back for his church and that he is the answer for the world today and that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and that the Holy Spirit will give you life and power and, and teach you all things and comfort and that we can have the peace that passes all understanding in the midst of a storm Instead of doing that, so much of the church is worried about whether I'm wearing a tie on Sunday morning or not, whether my hair is brown the way I was born, whether I dyed it purple, whether I have earrings in my ear. I'm using myself as an example, you know? But they're judging one another and not loving one another. And you know, these young people that are hungry and thirsty after God because he is the only true God and the only real answer is Jesus. These young people, they're turned off by, turned off. They're not coming and staying in the churches because they're seeing people judging one another instead of loving one another. This should be a place. What is our slogan here? Anybody know what it is? Where you are loved. Where you are loved. This should be a place of healing. This should be a place of peace and restoration and love. This should not be a place where you're taking the inventory of your neighbor and you're just... Da, 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 da. Now, I'm not saying to hang out with people in, in white and sin. I'm saying use discernment. Be with people that are walking in righteousness. And when God sends you to be the light to somebody who's fallen away along the wayside, be the light, but love them back into the kingdom. Don't condemn them. Amen. That's I'm not angry, Mama. I'm sad. I'm sad that so many people don't know Jesus. And they don't have hope. I'm not way to go to that one case only. But so many times, this in this church, when I was a teenager, and there were good people here, loving people here, I'm not, this isn't a blanket, but there only takes one or two bad apples. All right, yeah. But I was in the punk rock scene and I was out there really on drugs and in trouble, and but I knew I needed the Lord and I would come back to church and I'd pour my heart out on the altar and I would want to serve God with all my heart and soul. And then people would do things like cancel a youth trip because I was going. Because I was a bad apple. They didn't want their daughters around me. And tell me that's why it was canceled. They didn't even make a polite excuse, you know? Hurtful things, right? But you know what? You know, I, I forgive them. I love them. They were doing what they thought was right. They, they thought they had to protect their daughters. All right now. But we get so caught up in the do's and the don'ts and who's doing what, why, when, and how that we forget to do the two things that Yeshua said to do. And that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul. And to love your neighbor as yourself. He said all the law of the prophets could hang on those two commandments. If you look at the Ten Commandments, you look at the first four, and it's love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul. Last, look at the last six, and it's love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you love God, you're not going to have any grave image before him. You're not going to use his name in vain. You see? So on and so forth. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to take his wife. 
You're not going to covet his belongings. You're not going to steal. You're not going to bear false witness. You're not going to do these things if you love. And the so on and so forth with all of the laws found in the scripture that we should try to abide by. No, but Jesus. What we know him. I've gone through some things the last couple of years I never thought I would ever go through. And if I didn't know Jesus, All right. I wouldn't have made it. That's true. When people even around you that you that love you, that are close to you, they don't understand sometimes and they'll question and they'll judge. And don't look at my family. I'm not talking about that. My family's perfect. <laughs> but people around you will inevitably judge you and hurt you and kick you and misunderstand you. And these things drive people away from the house of God. But when you know the know the know the know the voice of your Savior, There's nothing that can dissuade you. When I died of a crack overdose when I was like 22 years old, 21, 20, 20, how old was it? 21, 18, something like that. I was a young guy. And I didn't even do that drug. I just happened to be showing off for some girl that was, it was a stupid thing. But I knew how to do everything because I knew it all, you know, young people. And I was running away. And when I died, I overdosed. I actually died 24 minutes or 26 minutes. And kind of, I'm getting old now, I'm forgetting the exact number of minutes. I should know that. But my, my watch, I was wearing a, a Movado watch. I, I love that watch. When I hit the floor, I, I busted the watch and it stopped. But when I had walked into the little trap house, I call it, I had synced my watch with the the clock on the wall, just because I was bored. You know, I was waiting. And so when I came back from that experience, at 24, 26 minutes had passed, you know, and I had been, my body had been moved into another room. But what happened to me was that I was falling in darkness. All right now. I just was falling, you know, and it was, Pastor Larry, it was like no argument, no, but, 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 God, but, but, no little kid like begging their mom or dad for something, no, no. It was like I knew that perfect justice was met out to me. No questions, I just knew that I had been judged without wanting. What have I done? I wonder if it's going to be as bad as it's supposed to be. And I was falling, and I was falling, and I was hearing not good sounds. I won't go into that now, but I was getting terrified, petrified, horrified, you know, about where I was going. And then I heard a voice that I knew because he's been speaking to me since I was a child. He was speaking to me when I was raped at church by two men that were supposed to be Christians. He was with me when I almost drowned. He was with me when my brother almost drowned. He was with me every time something bad happened to me. When I got lost at the ocean in Santa Cruz, he was with me. He's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He was with me when I woke up in the middle of the night and there were, and I was terrified at the bad dreams, or I, and I was four or five or six, or he was with me when the demons came into my room and tried to get me, you know, because there was a little demonic boy down the street. He was with me when, when the coven tried to take me out of school and train me up to be a, a witch, okay? He was with me every single day of my life, and he spoke to me every single day of my life, and I knew his voice. And I was foolish enough to run, and I knew I was being foolish when I ran. So I knew that the perfect justice had been met, and that I was going to a place I should never have gone to because I knew the Lord. 
But guess what that voice said? Hallelujah. I knew it was his voice, and I knew it was true, and I knew it wasn't a trick, because my sheep knew my voice, and his word is true and alive, and I have read the scripture so many times, and he said something that he said in the scripture, those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I said, Jesus! Boom! I woke up in my body, 26 minutes later, I think is what it was. And I wasn't in the front room anymore. I was dragged back in the laundry room. I was covered with wet towels and, and paper, a newspaper, and, and they smelled really bad. I can still smell them today. Turpentine rags, too. You know, it was really gross and it was moldy. And, and there was somebody with a hand in my pocket because I had a $100 bill in there and they knew it. And they was trying to rob my dead body. Boy, were they surprised when God woke me up. <laughs> And he sent me back to my body, you know? <laughs> Jesus is alive. Yes, he, is. he is the King of Kings. Yes, he, is. he is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And he says simply, do these two things. I mean, the prophets, they gave us the Torah of Moses. He gave us the Torah you know, 613 things we're supposed to do. And they whittled it down to the 10 most important. And then Micah came and he gave us uh, three, right? All right. And then Yeshua came and said, just two. Micah just said, what did he say? Do you remember what he said? Seek justice, love mercy. Not love justice. That's silly because we're all sinners and we deserve to go to hell. But Jesus saved us. Love mercy. Don't be happy when somebody gets what they deserve. Love it when they get mercy and they get another chance because you got another chance. I got more than one chance. And walk. With pride because you have the best suit and you said have some Jimmy Choo's. No. Walk in humility before your God. We're the same. We all are sinners saved by grace or we haven't been saved by the blood of Jesus. And we need to tell those that don't know him about him. It's just a really simple message. Jesus crucified, risen again, and coming back for a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle washed by his blood. He paid the price that no man could pay and that he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He is the Messiah. He is our king. And he is the one who can take back the grant deed for planet Earth and revitalize it because he's perfect and he's the righteous judge. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Nothing else matters. All right. Seek him and his righteousness. Amen. And everything else will be added up to you. But seek him for yourself, not for your neighbor, or to see why they are falling short so you can tell everybody. That's it. I didn't even stay on my points. I just went with the Holy Spirit led me today. We, we, we've been li living out a little bit later than we should. Uh, I want to uh, welcome and greet uh, Pastor Timothy and, and Mama Tim. Mama Tim, we love you and thank you. Appreciate you. As they're coming in, their service starts at 1 and we're still here. It's five after. I think the Holy Spirit uh, has said what he wanted to say today. I love you. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Abba Father, he loves you. The Holy Amen. Spirit loves you. Yeah, yeah. The angels are looking over you. Hallelujah. The blood, it cleanses you. Yes, Rejoice and go tell the world about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen? And how much you love him and what he's done for you. And then he'll add the rest. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
Let us hear you speak every day. Let us seek your word for understanding. Let us rightly divide the word of truth, being led by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of the Holy One, the one we call the Holy Spirit. Let us be led by the one that you said would help us. Let us show your love to one another. Let us show the type of love you showed us on Calvary, that you loved us so much you died for us. And not just a simple little death, but it was agonizing, yes, horrific, amidst mocking and scourging and pain yes, and humiliation in a public place. And you are the God of all gods, of all creation, of everything. Yes, there are no other gods before you. Yes, and what did you say? Yes, Abba, what did Yeshua say to you on that cross? He said, to forgive us. Because we don't even know what we're doing. Thank you for that love that you can forgive us in our ignorance and our sin and our willful sinfulness and our mistakes and our this bit we're deceived or when we are weak or thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your blood. Thank you for your spirit. Lord, let us get out of the details of our own life experience, our own joy and happiness or, or misery and sadness, whatever our own situation looks like. Let us get out of ourselves and into you. Let us abide in your love the way your scripture told us to do. In it, let us be in your love so that when we encounter others, we will just ooze your love all over them. And let us do it in a way that brings glory to your kingdom and that brings salt where the preservation is needed. Let us be healing beacons coming into a situation by your authority. And let us be known as your children, Father. Let us be known for your love. Let us be known for your truth. Let us be known for who you are, because we are your children. We thank you now in the name of Yeshua Jesus, our soon coming King, and all those people said, Amen. 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 The whole of manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we are the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. And we are. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord God keep you. May the Lord God cause your face, his face, to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Amen.